As we begin our time of celebration today, I want to begin it with a little bit of transparency. I know and appreciate that many of you who are here today know my aunt as Mabry. Raise your hand if that's how you know her. Be that as it may. <laughs> we're here today because of my Aunt Tootsie. And we're going to celebrate Tootsie's long years of life. And we're going to celebrate our faith in our risen Lord. In my 50 years of ministry plus, <laughs> I have led worship at several hundred funerals. A number of them, and certainly among the most difficult of them, have been for family members. And that's because I know each of you, <laughs> as well as my aunt. For me, there's a whole different level of caring in these moments. So with that in mind, I want us to gather to worship God, and I want us to celebrate the life of Tootsie Ramsey Hunt. <laughs> We're gonna have opening sentences from scripture, would you hear these words? Gathered in Christ's name, let us praise God who is our certain hope in all of life's seasons, even in its final season. So in the face of death, would you believe the good news that our scriptures proclaim? Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. We come for that comfort. From the psalmist, as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who love him. And from John's gospel, words of hope and assurance, I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Now our call to worship today is going to be a little bit different. It's going to require your participation. And by participation, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you at appropriate times to say, Christ is risen. And I do not want it to be, Christ is risen because that does not sound like an affirmation, that does not sound like hope, that does not sound like encouragement. So when I point to you, if you would say with some enthusiasm and with some faith and with some hope, Christ is risen. And just to make sure that you don't disappoint me, we'll try that one time right now. Now that, Karen, you got a good voice. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Darkened skies, faces that have been stained with tears, and yet we come. Drawn by some cord of faith, some invisible thread of hope, and we come sometimes uncertain, at times skeptical, and yet hopeful and brave. We're drawn again to witness to the truth for this moment. Hope is alive. Christ is New life is possible. Christ is Love is stronger than death. Christ is Sorrow shall come to an end. Light overcomes the darkness. Would you bow with me in prayer? Gracious God, 
Your steadfast love endures forever. Your faithfulness to every generation. Trustworthy in all your words, gracious in all your deeds. We ask that you administer to us now as we gather to celebrate the life of Mabry Tutsi Hunt and to once again claim the promises of our faith. Speak to our hearts your word of comfort. Make our hearts know hope through the promises of Holy Scripture. And even as we share our sorrow, we ask that you would fill us with joy and peace that can come only from you. In quietness, let us hear the comfort of your word. Amen. <clears throat> family, friends. In this season of life that we call death, we find ourselves seeking comfort and assurance in so many different ways. And some of that comfort comes from your presence as you put your arms around the shoulders of George and Karen and Michael and all the grandchildren. And some of that comfort comes from sharing memories. I have heard a number of funny stories in the last few days. But the greatest comfort comes from God's words and from the promises that are given by God. So I ask that you would now hear these words. Take them to your hearts. First from the prophet Isaiah, some selected verses. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. I have called you by name, Tutsi. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, your Savior. I am he who comforts you, says your Lord. Do not be afraid when one dies. Have you forgotten your maker? He created the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. One who dies shall soon be released. He shall not die, but be with the Lord. He will gather his lambs into his arms. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary Young people shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, former things shall no longer be called to mind. Rejoice and be filled with delight, for the new has come. And then from John's Gospel, probably more familiar words than those, a promise that we have. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
in my father's house are many rooms. John did not write this, and he wrote that, but not what I'm about to say. Uh, I have to assume that one of those rooms is a kitchen. <laughs> and because I make that assumption, I know where Tutsi is right now. God is having a feast on either carrot cake or red velvet cake or peach pie or M&M cookies, something. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. There where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who come to the Father come through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him, and you have seen him. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give peace as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From Ryan this morning, hear amazing grace. Do you remember, George, I know you do, gathering at Grandmother Hunt's house with that old upright player piano and somebody trying to play and all of us trying to sing together? Do you remember that? You do. You play so much better than any of us did. <laughs> we might have actually been able to sing. <laughs> Would you bow in prayer? In these moments, gracious God, through both memories and through claiming promise, may we be your people, assured and hopeful. Amen. 
we are going to begin these moments of meditation with memories. Michael asked, how long is the funeral going to be? <laughs> and my response was, it depends on what a lot of people write. You are sitting next to somebody who writes a lot. <laughs> Let me, let me just share that my very earliest memories of my aunt are kitchen memories. Sunday afternoons at my grandparents where my sister and my mother and I lived, extended family gathered, aunts and uncles and cousins and a few strays that I must assume were relatives of some kind, but I had no idea what. And we gathered for Sunday dinner. And I remember when I would sneak into the kitchen just to make sure that a meal was being prepared, being amazed by the bustle in that kitchen as this huge mass of women prepared a meal. We as children were out in the yard and the men, with the exception of George, would gather on the porch or under a tree and talk about all the gossip that they had heard, which was also going on in the kitchen. George did not gather with them, he came out and played with us. That was a wise choice. Tootsie was always among those women. And Tootsie was often, in fact, usually the source of some perfectly made dessert. But these moments aren't about my memories. These are the memories of those who knew her best her children, and her grandchildren. So listen to these words, first from Karen. Yes, I think I picked the best for mom. Now, most of us don't get to pick our mothers, but Karen thinks she did. She taught me so much about life. She taught me to love family always. She taught me how to cook, though hers was always better than mine. She taught me to garden, although she could make anything live and I ended up letting all things die. I found out water is a must. You and I will talk about this because I, I need to know exactly what that means. She showed me what a mother's love is so that I could love my daughter deeply and unconditionally. She loved her family growing up and what is now referred to as the farmhouse. She loved a spotless house. I didn't put this down, but I, I know that in the last number of months, as rooms became filled with boxes of Tootsie Roll Pops and other things, that that must have bothered your mother at least a little bit. She loved a spotless house. And if you took some time looking at the pictures before you came in, always wanted to look her best. She even put on lipstick during the pandemic when she wore a mask so no one could see her face. She loved teaching. She loved her students. She would stay up late at night preparing for school because she had already spent her time with family earlier. 
That's why she was recognized, you all saw the picture, as Virginia Teacher of the Year. She did not like animals in her clean house. But at one point, she brought home a little Shih Tzu named Fuso, Fuso, whatever the dog's name was, and walked it through the house on a leash for a couple of days, and then the dog took over the house. She once took Karen to shop for a sports car. Now, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on Karen's words here. They shopped and shopped until they found a little red Porsche. My heart has envied. <laughs> that was the car Karen wanted. But the dealership was closed. What if somebody got there in the morning and bought that little red Porsche before Karen had a chance to have it? The solution? <laughs> Write a check for the car, even though you don't have your checkbook and have to get somebody else to write the check, and stick it underneath the windshield on the car so that they would see it the next day and know that you were coming back. Karen got the car. She wrote in her notes, crazy? Perhaps. <laughs> ah, the things you remember when memories are all that you have left. She would drive Michael and me crazy, making sure that we called her when we went anywhere and called her when we got home. Folks, Tootsie always needed to know what was going on. Always. But it was because she loved us so much. Now I want you to listen carefully, Michael and Karen. As much as your mother loved you and cared for you, I think you will agree that grandchildren upstaged that love. Grandchildren were not only to be loved, they were to be spoiled. When I would visit and ask for a family update, my Aunt Tootsie always had an update on just about everybody, but children could be covered in five minutes. Grandchildren, Rick, you might as well settle in on the couch because it's going to take a while. Tootsie was one proud grandma. I want you to listen to these words that have been shared. From Kristen. Our parents give us life. Our grandparents give us a sense of who we are and where we came from. This week, as we said goodbye to Grandma Tootsie, it hit me how incredibly lucky I have been to have my lovely grandmother with me for 34 years. And not only with me, but an integral, close part of my life. It is rare for a grandparent-grandchild relationship to be so essential and so long-lasting. But then Grandma Tutsi was the exceptional kind of person every single day of her life. One of the best memories I had growing up was visiting the farmhouse. The farmhouse is going to occur over and over again in this. Where my great-grandparents resided. And I remember always packing my caterpillar container because there were billions of caterpillars. And I would fill my container up and bring them back home. That's one thing I always looked forward to. Us catching caterpillars and, of course, seeing my sweet grandma. 
She loved deeply and fully all of us. She was the kind of person who just had more love in her heart for the more people who joined our lives. The story of my grandmother would not be complete if I didn't pay homage to her incredible cooking. The kitchen arrives again. If anything, everything she made was delicious. Even my children thought her peach pie was amazing. She is so much a part of who I am, even though I knew she would one day leave us. I can't quite believe she's gone. Grandma Tutsi, you impacted my life in so many ways. You shaped who I am. You shaped who my children are. You influenced all of us so greatly. I will always love you and save a special corner of my heart to keep you with me. And I know we will miss you every day of our lives. From Kristen. From Ryan. Some of his favorite childhood memories include baking, especially carrot cake. You are a smart young man. Going around Roanoke Valley to buy Beanie Babies, going to the farmhouse, helping at your yard sales, playing, thank God I'm a country boy on the piano. You want to give us a chord? <laughs> and I will definitely miss her saying, and folks, if you don't recognize this, you haven't known Tootsie or Mabry. I will definitely miss her saying, what? And it's not just the word what, it was that look on her face, no matter how loud you said what you said or how softly it was, what? <laughs> A true memory. From Chloe, who communicates from the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> she is in Argentina, right? But she sent her words. I would not know how to put into words all of the good memories that I have. Like baking M&M cookies with her in the kitchen. Just walking into a room with her smiling. And how nice it was to see Grandma smile at something. Also, her perfectionist mindset in the kitchen, and just about everywhere else. I, excuse me, Chloe, I added that. <laughs> and was setting the table that was always beautiful and touching because she always wanted everything to be special. And I always looked forward to her cursive writing that really took a long time to read and always left me wishing that I could write like that. And then from Haley, settle in folks. <laughs> I have been so blessed during my 35 years my grandparents have been a huge part of my life, and for that I will always be thankful. I can say literally from day one, they have always been there for me, which makes losing my grandmother even harder. Sure, I knew one day this would happen, but it's hard to come to that realization. Growing up, my grandparents both never missed anything that was important in my life. 
I have such wonderful memories of my grandmother spending days with me cooking, <laughs> playing school with my dolls, or taking me to the place she grew up, which we call the farmhouse. I loved going to the farmhouse because I got to see so many of my extended family members. I believe that because she never told me any different growing up, her sisters were just always my aunts and never my great aunts and so many cousins, no matter which generation or number of cousins they were, they were just all my cousins. I was blessed to getting to know such a large part of my family in this way. As I got older and went through high school, I remember her helping me with homework after school many times. I wasn't always the best student and had to study hard for my grades, but she was always right there helping me. One of my favorite treats she baked were back in the kitchen again, cake mix cookies. And it may sound so silly, but these were my favorite and yet so simple. When I was able to drive, I will never forget looking for a car with her. She called everywhere and was actually the one who found my first car. Even though she later backed into it and told me it was fine, it was just a line that there was no real dent there. Through college and my couple of changes in majors, she was right there and wanted to make sure I succeeded in a profession that I would love. And after working for a few years, I decided to go back and get my master's. And again, she was supportive and always called to make sure I was doing okay. Speaking of calling, while sometimes it might have driven us crazy, she would call for some of the silliest things, only really to make sure that we were doing okay because she loved us so much. My grandma was one of the most giving, caring, and loving people I ever met. And I can say she taught me to love that way. She was also one of the most stubborn people I have ever met. <laughs> Just ask my husband, and he will say amen to that. <laughs> Last year, I was able to have an early wedding before a bigger celebration later, and Shane and I wanted our grandparents to be able to attend, but knew a bigger ceremony would be hard for them. So we got married at the farmhouse last spring. She was able to attend, looked beautiful as usual, and for this, I will forever be thankful. She was able to meet so many of Shane's family and, of course, loved our niece and nephew because she always lit up above, uh, around children. Shane has grown to love the farmhouse, frequently hunts there. Every time he has been hunting or just relaxed, she would always call to see what he got and to see how the farmhouse was. I'm sure he'll miss this hunting season. He was also able to get her to eat deer venison, which we were all shocked about, and she loved it. Now, I have always had many dogs, and while she was a clean freak and always said dog hair bothered her, she would always ask about our dogs. She even loved to be on FaceTime and talk to Odin. As her health declined, she still was going to make sure to share her opinion about things. And many times, I would be the one she would have to talk to before making a decision, which just now makes me laugh. We moved about a year ago. She was determined to get out here to see our house. And while that didn't happen, she was able to see it through FaceTime and enjoy our Christmas decorations and garden. In her final months, she learned that we were having twins in the fall, and the very first ultrasound she saw, she said, well, that's a boy and a girl. And she was right. 
However, she's been telling everyone in the past few weeks that we're having triplets, which she better be wrong about or Shane may actually panic. <laughs> Speaking of him, this last week when she was at home, she had a beautiful view out the window, and I'd been trying for hours to get her look outside. But when he stopped by, I told her she had a special visitor. And then she looked right outside and smiled until he was by her side. I could not be more thankful that she loves him so much. And while I am sad she will not get to meet the twins, I know that they will have another great grandparent who is a guardian angel and will watch out for them always. I will never be able to thank her enough for everything I have learned from her while having so many years of my life with her amazing memories. And then from Leah, who is something of a poet. <laughs> this is what I know for certain. I know for certain why I called my grandmother Tutsi. I know for certain why she called me every birthday and left a voicemail. I know for certain why she checked, why she checked in every holiday and during other times of the year. I know for certain why she always asked good questions. I know for certain why she had a sweet, but sharp sense of humor. I know for certain why the cards she sent and the gifts she gave were always special because she loved me. I know for certain she had the sweetest smile. I know for certain she would drop everything in a heartbeat to help you. I know for certain she loved Mary's diner and the old farmhouse. And I know for certain she loved dolls and listening to the piano. I know for certain she had the prettiest handwriting. And I know for certain she was a great cook. Her red velvet cake and her many recipes. I know for certain she had a loving teacher's heart. I know for certain she cared. I know for certain she was proud of me. And I know for certain she loved her family. I know for certain she loved me. And that is what I know for certain. She's shown a light on our lives. And she will be greatly missed and will always be greatly loved. Beautiful memories, beautiful expressions of love. Memories are great. But somewhere deep within our being, there is a longing for something more than just memories. In our human hearts, sometimes just like a faintly, dimly burning wick and sometimes like a, like a great fire, there's a yearning for a promise that in some mysterious way life does not end, but life goes on. And not just in memories, but in the real essence that continues to exist. A portion of my faith, and I expect a part of the faith of many of you, is bound up in that hope. Let me share with you two scriptures that underpin my faith. From the opening of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that was made. And in him was life. And that life was the light of all humankind. This true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The word was made flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Then from the Apostle Paul, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, that word in the beginning that always was, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing emptied himself of his power and eternity by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, good word, therefore, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names. My words this morning to those of you who are family, to all of us, to George, married to Tootsie for 71 years, almost as long as I've been alive. (laughs) This is the promise that's bound up in some mystery, an awesome mystery, that the eternal Christ, the eternal word, that always was, that was with God at the creation and a part of all creation, that this eternal God, who as John says, wasn't just with God, but was God, emptied himself, poured himself out of all honor and glory and stepped out of the eternal and into the temporal as a human Jesus, coming to reveal and share God's loving nature with us, even by dying. Greater love hath no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And this eternal Christ who became the temporal human Jesus and died for us is as we affirmed at the beginning of this celebration, the risen Christ who has promised, I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. That, folks, is the promise that makes these moments of worship a true celebration. Last Saturday, my Aunt Tutsi claimed that promise. And she was received by Christ. Not because, no matter what your memories are, not because of anything she did, not because of any merit on her part. She was received by Christ because God loved her and loved all of his creation enough to redeem it and us. So in the days that lie ahead, I encourage you, continue to share your memories with one another, continue to laugh together about 
odd things that Tutsi did from time to time, there is healing in those memories. But more important, let your faith claim that promise of a God whose love goes beyond my understanding, beyond my deserving. That's the promise we have. It is the promise your mother, your grandmother, your wife, my aunt, has claimed and now enjoys cooking red velvet cake for God. Would you bow in prayer? And as we end with prayer, would you imagine these first words are shared with you by Tutsi? In the midst of life, you and I are in death. From whom can we seek help? Our help, my help, is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit which dwells in you. Therefore, my family and friends, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body shall rest in hope. You, Lord, will show me the path of life. In your presence now is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Tutsi, Mabry Hunt. Before she was ours, she was yours. And just as you did not lose her in giving her to us, help us to know that we have not lost her in her return to you. And now as we offer Tutsi back into your eternal care, comfort this family in the days that lie ahead, strengthen them wherever there is weakness, and grant to them the, the peace that comes through your promises. It is in the name of Jesus we pray, he who reigns with you now eternally.